Hey kids, Miss Kulkarni here. We are finally on our last video for Unit 2. And we are going to discuss about density in this video and how we calculate the density. So as you look in the picture over here, there are two pictures and one of them shows packed particles and the other one shows particles which are little loose, loosely arranged that just tells you the particles are dense here and particles are less dense here and if you want to describe that in terms of density we can say this has high density and this has low density so what is actually density density is simply we can say it is a mass of a substance per its unit volume and look at the formula which we have it is simply mass divided by volume this problem we have one metal block with density given to you as 5 gram per milliliter and then the question is we break that block into two equal halves what happens to density so imagine we have a block a brick and that density is known and then we end up breaking that into let's say my drawing is really good and then we have exactly two blocks which are equal do you think density will become half this is 5.00 grams per milliliter obviously size is becoming half but will the density be half if you look carefully the size of the object also is changing so volume is changing and then density is mass over volume but what happens to mass if the object size is different the mass also will change so mass and volume both keep on changing and then even though we divide that block into two equal pieces the density will still remain same so that is still 5 gram per milliliter that's called physical intensity property which does not change with the change in the size of the object and we will talk about that more as we go on with our next units here are some examples of two questions which we have volume is given to you as 35.7 I just put the volume there then this is given to you as mass so that is M and we have to find out density so as we know the formula is simply dividing those two so your job is to plug in those values along with the units and then simplify till you get the final answer so in this case when I saw I ended up getting the answer 2.38 and look at the unit now the unit is going to be grams per centimeter cube that was simple right okay next problem density is given as 19.3 and mass is given 200 so this is mass and this is density you have to find out the volume so using our formula we can plug in the values and we can get 19.3 is equal to 200.00 and then that divided by volume so I need to find out the volume in this case and I can do it in different different ways I prefer to cross multiply and when you cross multiply you're going to multiply these two and these two together so we end up getting 19.3 V is 200.00 and then volume will be 200.00 divided by 19.3 and which I believe I got the answer 10.4 centimeter cube here's an example in which the values are not given directly now always make it a rule to circle all the values given because that's what you'll be using in your problem okay if you look carefully this value is duplicate what does it tell you it says liquid is filled in the graduated cylinder again it's saying liquid up to that cylinder so pretty much is telling you the volume of liquid is that 45.8 then we need to find out the mass because we had to find out the density 
for that unknown liquid and this is in milliliters so what do we know about the mass of liquid the empty cylinder is weighing that much and then after we fill that with liquid along with the liquid and cylinder what we get is 70 so your cylinder mass of cylinder suppose empty is m1 and the one with the liquid is m2 then we end up getting mass of empty cylinder as 26.5 grams and mass of cylinder plus liquid is 70.0 gram so what is the real mass of liquid it will be simply m2 minus m1 which will be 70.0 minus 26.5 okay when we subtract these two things we get the answer 43.5 gram once we have the mass and volume it is simply now to calculate density by using these two values so it will be m divided by v which is 43.5 grams over 45.8 milliliters and when we divide that comes out to be 0 0.950 and look at the units now the units will be grams per milliliter units do not change in this problem we have been given the mass of a particular substance 15.25 but the volume is not given directly to you first of all it says in a hundred milliliter graduated cylinder that is just telling you the capacity of the cylinder the next quantity which we have is 45.0 milliliters of water that's what we have and after we add stone what we get is 50.8 so we have volume 1 without adding the stone that is 45.0 and when we add the stone to that we get 50.8 milliliter and we know the principle principle of displacement of water if you immerse a solid in liquid it's going to displace the equal volume of water that means the volume of the object the stone will be v2 minus v1 which will be 50.8 minus 45.0 which will be 5.8 milliliters that's the volume and then we are going to work on density this value is the value for mass so density will be mass which is 15.25 grams divided by that's the value for volume divided by 5.8 milliliters and when we divide both those values we get the answer 2.63 grams per milliliter okay moving on to another problem this is a different way we can find out density of an object so look at this we have a rectangular solid let's say maybe we have a rectangular solid and then what is known given to us is the dimensions 3.4 by 1.2 by 1.7 so if we know the dimensions are 3.4 this is say 1.2 and this is say 1.7 volume is length times width times height so we can easily multiply all those numbers and we can find out the volume of that rectangular object and that volume comes out to be 6.936 centimeter cube once when we have the volume there is the value for mass and then density is mass which is 119.4 gram divided by 6.936 centimeter cube when you divide both of those we end up getting the answer 17 grams per centimeter cube
What we're going to do here is we're going to find out if the object can float or sink. Or will it be halfway uh, and not submerging completely and not floating? All of that depends upon the density of the object. So we are going to find out first the density of object and then we are going to compare the value with the density of liquid. Now keep in mind density for water is 1 gram per milliliter or it is 1 gram per cubic centimeter which is same thing. If the density of the object is less than 1 gram per milliliter the object will float and if it is more than that then it will be sinking. So in this problem here there is mass of the object given and there is volume given to us and our job is to find out if the object is going to sink or float. So simply we need to find out the density of that object and compare with density of water. So density for water if you remember is 1 gram per milliliter. We have kilogram and density is in gram per milliliter. So our first job will be to converting kilo to gram. That's our roadmap. And when we convert, we go to kilogram to gram. We need to diagonally across cancel kilogram. So kilogram comes there. We start with the given 3.2. So that comes over here. And then... With kilo it is 1 and kilo stands for 10 to the third. So we got that over here. When you cancel the units that's gone and your answer is 3.2 10 to the third. So we already got so many grams as the mass. Next thing we are going to do is find the density of the object which we have. And we are going to plug now the mass which we obtain in grams. So that goes there divided by the volume which we have 1950 milliliters and when we divide that we get the answer for this one as 1.69 grams per milliliter. Density of water is 1 and what we got is 1.69. It is higher, density higher, that means it will be sinking. So, whenever the density of the object is higher than density of water, it is going to sink. It is not going to float. All right, there is a last problem here, and which is kind of connected to what we have. What is it asking you is, the same substance, will it float or will it sink? in mercury and mercury has a density of 13.6 grams per milliliter. Remember density of our substance if you call it D1 we got that as 1.6 grams per milliliter and if you call this density as D2 then D2 is 13.6 grams per milliliter. Our object D1 that has density which is smaller than density of mercury. So density smaller that means you give me the answer. Will it float or will it sink? And the answer is yes it will float in mercury. So look at this. We already covered different type of problems to find density and also after we find density we can decide if the object is going to float or going to sink. So guys, we are done with our unit 2. So I hope you enjoyed all the videos of unit 2. I will see you in our next videos for unit 3. Goodbye. See you next video.